Hold your live, Chairman. Good evening and welcome everybody to this Southeast Area Planning Committee meeting on Wednesday, the 17th of March 2021. My name is Councillor Nick Skeens and I'm the Chairman of this committee. This meeting is held under new regulations which came into effect on the 4th of April last year in response to COVID-19 situation. Uh, please can I ask everyone present in this meeting to ensure your camera remains on where broadband permits and your microphone remains muted. If you could all mute your microphones, please, especially when you're not addressing the committee. This will reduce background noises and avoid any unintentional disturbances. Uh, we are streaming this meeting live as well as recording. And so by being present in the meeting, you are giving your consent to being recorded. Members and officers during each item, please use the hands up function of the meeting to indicate if you wish to speak. You are reminded that apart from indicating points of order or that you have to leave the meeting, the chat function should not be used for questions or any other purpose, uh, except if you arrive at the meeting. Uh, if you arrive at the meeting late or you know somebody has arrived late, it would be good to if you could let people know there. So that I think is fairly clear. We're speaking when speaking and referring to the agenda papers. Please ensure you reference a page or paragraph number and keep your contributions as clear and concise as possible. And when invited to speak, please ensure you turn on your microphone. It's so easy to forget. And now, if I may ask officers taking part in the meeting to introduce themselves, starting with uh, Matt Lee. Good evening, members. I am Matthew Lee, Lead Specialist Place and Chief Plan Officer at Morden District Council. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Michael Johnson. Good evening, members. I'm Michael Johnson, Lead Specialist Development Management. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Catherine Matthews. Good evening, Chairman. I'm Catherine Matthews, Specialist in Development Management. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hayley Parker Haynes. Good evening, members. I'm Hayley Parker Haynes and, I, and I'm a senior caseworker here at Malden District Council. Thank you. Thank you, Louise Staplehurst. Good evening, members. I'm Louise Staplehurst and I'm a specialist in development management. Thank you. Uh, Bernard Casey. Good evening, members. Bernard Casey, clerk to this evening's committee. Thank you. Uh, any other officers present? Tara Bird was here earlier. No, she's in. The, she's backup support. OK, great. Thank you. OK, well, before I call on the clerk to take the roll call of committee members, can I ask those councillors in attendance, that is to say, not part of the committee, but just listening in to introduce themselves, please? Good evening, everybody. Councillor Morris is here. And can I just um, um, suggest that Councillor Bassinger sorts out his collar. I believe your collar's up. That'll bug me for the whole meeting if, if your collar's up. <laughs> yes, OK. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, no. Thank you. Uh, and uh, are there any other councillors in attendance? No, OK. Uh, Bernard, can you please now carry out a roll call of members to confirm who is in attendance? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Members, I will call your names in alphabetical order. Can you please indicate your attendance, starting with Councillor Bassinger? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Beale? Councillor Beale? Councillor Bell? Good evening, everyone. I'm present. Councillor Boyce? Um, here but I don't know for how long I've got connectivity problems. I'm trying to follow this on my phone. I had no hand function um, and uh, other problems like very little sound. Thank you, Councillor Boyce. Councillor Channer. Uh, good evening, Chairman. Good evening, officers and members. I'm present. Like Councillor Boyce, I had a bit of trouble getting in, but hopefully touch wood, I'll be okay now. But if not, you know why. <laughs> Councillor Jewick. Yes, hello, good evening. Well, I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Helm. Present, Bernard. Thank you. Councillor Hull. Councillor Hull. Present, 
Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Skeens. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Stamp. Present, Bernard. Thank you, members. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, members. Please be advised that we have one public participant in this meeting this evening, uh, and I will call on him to speak at the appropriate time. Please note that he will be in the meeting with both his camera and microphone off until a decision is made uh, uh, well, when we come to his agenda item, in short. Uh, so apologies for absence. May I have those apologies, please, Bernard? We've received no apologies for absence, Chairman. But as you noted, Councillor Beale is not yet in the meeting. So. Thank you. I have a hand up from Wendy Stem. Wendy, go ahead. So sorry, Chairman. Councillor Beale's trying to get in. He's having difficulty logging in. Ah. Thank you very much. OK, so uh, on to the uh, minutes of 17th of February 2021. It's recommended the minutes of the meeting held on that date, uh, which are found on pages 7 to 12, are approved as a true and accurate record. I so move. And if you wish to second that motion, could you unmute your microphone and state your name now? The helm agreed. Thank you, Councillor Helm. If any member wishes to raise any matter of accuracy, please use the hands up function to indicate and I will invite you to speak. I see nobody raising any hands. Bernard, can you advise me? You haven't seen anybody, have you? No, Chairman. Oh. OK, so would you like oh, to... Sorry, Chairman, oh, Councillor yeah, Chano start. seems to have her hand up now. It was there, Penny Chano's hand. No, I think I might have flicked that. Sorry, by mistake. No problem. Okay. And it's back up again, but I, I think. I'm sorry, is it back up again? Yeah. Okay, so do you have, is everybody happy to agree these by assent? Agreed. Just Agreed. 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 Okay, thank you very much. And Berna, will you now take? Uh, oh, we well, don't need to take the vote. No, we go on to declarations of interest to disclose the existence and nature of any disclosable pecuniary interests, other pecuniary interests or non-pecuniary interests relating to items of business on the agenda, having regards to paragraphs six and to eight inclusive of the code of conduct for members. And members are reminded that uh, they are also required to disclose any such interests as soon as they become aware, should the needs need arise, throughout the meeting. And if any member has an interest to declare, will you please use the hands up function now to indicate and I will invite you to speak. And I see Penny, uh, Councillor Channer's hand up now. So uh, Councillor Thank, Thank you, Chairman. And that is a genuine hand up. Um, yes, non-pecuniary Chairman, as a member of Essex County Council, who is consulted on planning applications for matters under its remit, such as highways, education, access um, matters like that chairman thank you thank you very much uh, councillor bassinger uh, thank you chairman uh, non pecuniary um, i play tennis and am a member of the same tennis club as the grandson of the owner of the bradwell marina so non pecuniary right thank you very much for clarifying okay so we can now uh, move on to uh, the next item item 5 uh, which is uh, 20 stroke 0 double one six three stroke FUL or Orchard Cottage, 36 Mount View, Crescent, St. Lawrence. Uh, this is found on pages 13 to uh, 32. Please note that a member's update in relation to this application has been circulated prior to the meeting. In a moment, I'll call on the officer to present this item. Uh, if the officer could, um, Hala Parker Baines, just tell us what was in the update that will help Councillor Channer, who wasn't able to see them. And members, a reminder that if you wish to speak on this item, please make this known by using the hands up function within the meeting. I will then come to you in turn. Please keep your points clear and succinct. Uh, Ms. Parker Hayes, could you please present the report? Thank you, Chairman. is sought to demolish the existing chalet bungalow, subdivide the plot and construct two dwellings. Each dwelling would benefit from its own access. The members update that was circulated prior to this meeting was in relation to a second consultation response received from the parish council. However, no new material considerations or comments were made from their previous original um, consultation response. By way of a verbal members update, a condition ensuring the first floor windows to the northern side elevation of plot one 
and southern side elevation of plot two are obscure glazed and of a non-opening design was omitted from section eight of the report. This is the location plan, closed block plan. These are the existing elevations and floor plan. These are the proposed elevations of plot one. These are the floor plans for plot one. These are the elevations for plot two. These are the floor plans for plot two. This is the proposed street scene elevation. These are some photographs of the site. Properties. Area. It should be noted that this application is a resubmission of a previously refused application. It was considered at the time of the previous application that the, pro the proposal would have an unacceptable impact in relation to, to design and the impact on the character and appearance of the area, neighbouring amenity and the amenity of future occupants of the proposed dwellings, parking and rams. These are detailed within section 3.2.7 of the officer's report. The following slides compare the previously refused scheme to the current application. <laughs> These are the block plans. As you can see, the rear projection of plot two has been repositioned to the other side of this proposed dwelling and the distances between the dwellings and the boundaries has also increased due to the reduction in width of the dwelling proposed by this current scheme. These are the elevations for plot one. As you can see, the proposed front dormer has been removed and the rear dormer has been altered to accommodate a pitched roof alongside the reduction in width and depth of the proposed dwelling under this application. These are the floor plans for plot one, showing the internal reconfiguration of the dwelling under this application. These are the elevations for plot two. As you can see, the overall design of the dwelling largely remains the same besides the relocation of the single storey rear projection and the reduction in width and depth of the dwelling under this current application. These are the floor plans for plot two showing the internal reconfiguration of the dwelling under this application. And these are the street scene elevations which better demonstrate the reduction in scale of the dwellings. Due to the reduction in the scale of the proposed dwellings and the sympathetic design, the proposal is considered on balance to have an acceptable impact on the character and appearance of the surrounding area. Furthermore, due to the internal configurations of the dwellings, the reduction in height and the relocation of the rear projection to plot two, it is no longer considered that the proposed development would have an overbearing impact or result in an unacceptable loss of light to the neighbouring occupiers or future occupants of the proposed dwellings. Furthermore, the applicant has submitted a legal agreement to ensure the appropriate mitigation in relation to RAMS can be secured should the application be approved. It is therefore considered that on balance the proposed development would be acceptable and therefore is recommended for approval in line with the recommended conditions and the condition advised in the verbal update. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, right, so we now move to uh, talk about this, debate the pros and cons. Um, uh, but uh, is there anybody who would like to speak on this item? I see no hands. There are no strong opinions. Uh, ah, uh, Councillor Channer. Um, thank you, Chairman. Well, I have called this one in um, to committee. Um, the officer um, made reference to the parish council's views um, that this was, I think, overdevelopment, and uh, obviously they placed an objection about the, the development. Um, I have to say, um, the officer's report does refer to this being on balance, and I'm not sure at the moment, I'm totally sure that I feel that all matters, um, that the previous reasons of refusal have been overcome. I think I'll tell you for why. I know the officer's report states that the frontages around range from around 11.9 to 18.6 metres, but this is still quite a narrow plot, and looking at it and knowing Mount View um, as I do and the various designs, I do feel there's a, still an element of squeezing in two dwellings onto a, you know, a small site. And that does concern me. And I appreciate what the officers said about the moving of various elements. Um, so if something has moved away from the boundary and there's been, um, I think, some, some reduction in height and width 
um, etc and depth but I do still have some concerns about the overall design and the uh, you know the in inappropriate visual relationships with immediate neighbours and um, the surrounding area if I'm honest um, in, in what I see and I think the officer's report said this is one of the largest plots um, well it won't be when it's split and we're talking about accesses um, of four, uh, plot one I think no width is going to be uh, 4.5 meters and plot two 4.3 meters um, although it says eight meters of verge between them I, is that correct I think I'm I, I couldn't quite work that one out actually but because um, that's to me is larger uh, well slight, uh, less than what the officer's report is saying the width of the the site is unless I, my maths are wrong uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Channer. Can we? Uh, can I return to um, uh, Haley Parker Haynes? Could you uh, respond to Councillor Channer's uh, comments, especially about the width? Thank you, Chairman. I'll just get the proposed block plan up, um, and this should explain that. Two seconds. So the plot width. I don't know if you can see it here um, for each dwelling it's broken down for you by the degree of separation from plot one and plot two from the neighbouring properties. So there's 1.5 metres there and then six metres and then um, another 1.4 metres before the shared boundary between the dwellings. So if my maths was good on point, it's um, 8.95 metres for each plot width. Okay, that's okay. Each, uh, each plot width, right? Out. Okay, yeah. I was going by what it, what it um said. There was a four point five meters referred to uh, plot two, four point three, and eight meters of verge between. Which, when I added all that up, came to a not quite the same as what the report then said. The whole width of the plot was, and again, my point is, it says that it's one of the largest in the areas at eighteen meters wide existing plot. Um, and uh, frontage around frontages around range from 11.9 meters to 18.6. I still feel that this is still trying to squeeze in two properties onto sort of a site. Um, and if you look, can you put the block plan up again, please? Sorry, Chair, is it possible for Councillor Chan just to clarify the paragraph she's talking to? So I just want to the double start check what the, she's at the saying. start of the report. Plot it starts off at that plot one four point five meters very early on in the report. Plot one four point five meters. Plot two four point three. Yeah, found it at the beginning, so I was trying to look further down. Thank you, Councillor Channa. Yeah. You, Chairman. So, as you can see, look at the size of those dwellings. If you look at well, where are we? I haven't really got the. If you look at those two dwellings going in there, look at. The, uh, the property, uh, there's a slightly what, what looks like a brown colour, ready brown colour to me, the property on the left there. And then look at the property on the right where the little grey sort of shaded property is. Can you, If you can see what I'm getting to here, you've got very, very tiny looking properties, as you'd see them from the roads uh, uh, street scene, if you're there. The other properties seem to be bigger on mass. So it seems to me you're trying to squeeze in or the planning application is trying to squeeze in two very small sort of properties. Has have we got something? This is the block plan. Have we got a location plan showing those two in there within the wider area? Because there's a number of um, designs. I know you showed the the red sort of um, planning application area without these uh, superimposed on, but I think that would have been quite helpful as well. Although I suspect they'd look so quite small. Um, that would really sort of highlight where I'm sort of coming from on this. To me, that likes two very small properties, and we do need new, new, we do need smaller properties, as I guess. One's two bedroomed, but it just that to me looks as though we're squeezing something in um, yeah. on a site. Okay, uh, uh, Councillor Channer, thanks very much. You've made your point, and I take your point particularly that uh, I didn't see an elevation which would have shown how those houses, a street scene, which showed how those houses fit in that street scene. I don't recall that from the presentation. Uh, if there is one, uh, uh, Ms Parker Haynes, it would be good if you could put that up. Is there one? Are you aware of? 
not of a location plan with the two dwellings shown. No. Right. OK, I'd like uh, uh, to invite anybody else uh, who would like to speak on this and then we shall move to a vote. Uh, Councillor Bell. Thank you, um, Mr Chairman. Just really to uh, to echo Councillor Channer's concerns, when uh, when I looked at this, my first thought was all oh, two little Lilliput houses for the Lilliputians to live in uh, amongst the ordinary sized homes. And it does, I don't know if contrived is the word, certainly squeezed in, but is that a sufficient planning reason? It's this it's this on balance thing again that I struggle with. I really do because uh, it's it's sort of fairly arbitrary, and I'm I'm not convinced that on a planning basis that that that, that is enough to uh, to refuse this. So I'm I'm really I'm really torn on this one. Thank you, Councillor Bell, Councillor Helm. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I agree with everything that Councillor Channer has said. It's rather cramped and contrived. contrived. Uh, between the two buildings, there's two metres, but there's a fence in between and a bit of greenery. So I don't know what gap you have to get to the back garden and the metre the other side, either side. So it's really cramped on this site. They're trying to squeeze everything on. And I think it's just that bit too much. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, put forward a proposal uh, and uh, Councillor Lem, if you could take your hand down, please, that would be great. Um, thank you. Uh, that we, uh, in short, uh, go with oh, the sorry, officers. Chair, is it possible if I just quickly come back, I think, on a couple of points? Is that OK? I'm sorry. Yes, of course. I should have invited you. Go no, ahead. That's fine. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms Park is it possible for you to call up the street scene? I think you did. I think because I did think Councillor Skeens asked if there was one. I think there is, isn't there? Yes, there you go, Council uh, members. I think Councillor oh, Skeens yes. asked for the. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Because they've uh, put that in colour. The other two aren't in colour, so it makes it look bigger than. than but I, I understand that. I'm not suggesting anything by that. It just is. It is the impression. But yes, I understand. Thanks very much for um, that. Go ahead. Also. Can uh, Ms Parkhans go to the first slide on this presentation? I think that might help members with relation to Councillor Channer's point um, yeah. about, um, as the officer's report states and as obviously has been discussed, the plot widths in this area are, are quite varied. Um, there is a mixture of quite small ones down to actually relatively large ones. Um, there is an eclectic and varied style of properties and design. Um, I think. This is um, proposing uh, properties on a smaller scale than what predominantly is within the area. But as decision makers, we have to decide whether or not that would actually result in demonstrable harm to the character of the area in an area where there is such a varied and diverse mix of property styles and designs. So that's just what I'd obviously highlight to members to take into account that, you know, we don't have a plug land supply and that will weigh in favour of this current proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Channer has raised her hand. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Well, that's my point. If, OK, we, this is the best we've got, which is the, the planning application site. But a line virtually down the middle in the application site. OK, and then think about those dwellings with the 1.5 metres either side um, of the other dwellings, which it says in the report both are. There's a distance of 1.5 metre, plot one between the boundary plot two minimum of 1.5 metres. So if you, we've got to all use our imaginations, I know, but I did a rough sketch. If you put a line down the middle, um, because it's only about 4.5 metres or 4.3 difference between um, those sort of areas, um, and imagine the 1.5, you the, you try and put two little, two little dwellings on there, and I think you'll find when you see the other, the other blocks, on, on the respective plots, those two will certainly be different to anything I feel in that immediate locality. It will be a case of two little blocks in there. That's right. If you look at either side, you've got quite OK. Um, you might think um, the width isn't quite right. Um, in, in fact, I did question the boundary lines at one time, but those dwellings either side look better placed on their plots 
it's a bit of a difference when you get something divided that's relatively okay my, the report said 18 meters wide but when you split that and then put two little dwellings on with the divisions in between those dwellings as well let's not forget as well as the 1.5 either side it does make that look very tight to my thank, thinking th thank you very much uh, councillor channer uh, i'm now going to propose make a proposal uh, and i'm going to propose that uh, uh, we uh, that uh, this committee uh, approves uh, the uh, application subject to conditions as detailed in section eight of this report. Do I have a seconder? Okay, so I don't have a seconder, so therefore we will move to um, s somebody coming up with a, as an alternative recommendation. Does anybody have a, a, a different proposal? Well, Chairman, um, if you haven't got a seconder, I suppose that means we have got to then move a, a, rec a, a proposal of refusal. I'll yeah. do that, uh, Chairman, if that's yeah. the case, if I'm correct on that. If you haven't got a seconder and you can't move your proposal, then the only alternative um, would be refusal. So you check no, Councillor, Councillor Beale, Beale has his hand up. up. Oh, did he? Right, Councillor Beale. Right, okay. Yes. Yeah, the way you've made it, Councillor Beale. Hello, Councillor Beale. Good evening, sir. Um, I was trying to get uh, into the, by using the yellow hand, etc. Uh, it wasn't coming up, but it has now. I'd be quite happy to propose uh, to second to the proposal made by um, was it Mrs. Channer? By me. Oh well. Uh, sorry. No, sorry uh, by yourself, sir. Yes. Okay. So just to be clear, you are seconding uh, the chairs. Uh, recommendation proposal. that we approve subject to conditions. Yes. OK, so let's go to a vote on that, if we can, please. Um, I don't suppose this is going to be done by assent, since there's clearly division on this. So if you could, uh, Berner, if you could take a vote, please. Yes, Chairman. Members, we're voting for the um, recommendation, the officer's recommendation of approval. Um, can you please state clearly for against or abstain, I will call your names in alphabetical order. Councillor Bassinger. Against. Councillor Peel. For. Councillor Bell. I have to abstain, I'm afraid. Councillor Boyce. I wonder if you can hear us. Councillor Boyce. Councillor Channer. Um, against. Councillor Dewick. I did, that, that, something wasn't heard there. Could you repeat, please? Councillor Dewick. Abstain. Thank you. Was Councillor Helm. Sorry, Chairman, sorry to okay. me that wasn't heard. No, it was, no, you were heard, Councillor. Oh, uh, OK, and thank you. Councillor Jewick was heard. Now we're on to Councillor Helm, I believe. Against. Councillor Hall. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Skeens. Four. Councillor Stamp. Uh, four. Thank you. Chairman, that's three for the recommendation, three against the recommendation and three abstentions. OK, does that mean that I have a casting vote even though I voted? Yes, you have. Then I'm going to uh, vote uh, to approve subject conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Well, that, then that's carried. That's that's four. That will be four for the recommendation, three against and three abstentions. So that's carried. Thank you very much indeed. We move on to item six, 20, 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, stroke FUL, Barn at Little Acre, Scotts Hill, Southminster. Uh, this is pages 33 to 48. 
Please note that a member's update in relation to this application has been circulated prior to the meeting. I'm sure we will be told about that in a second. So I'm going to call on the officer to present this item. But I just need to remind you that if you wish to speak on this item, please make this known by using the hands up function within the meeting. And I will then come to you in turn. So please keep your points clear and succinct. Uh, Ms Staplehurst, please, it's your turn to present a report. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Planning permission is sought to convert an agricultural barn into a three bedroom dwelling. It's noted that the application follows an extant prior approval application to convert the barn into two dwellings. This has until September this year to be implemented and is a material consideration in the assessment of this application. Um, as stated, please see the members update with an amended reason for condition six and confirmation that a legal agreement has been submitted in relation to RAMS. This is the location plan showing the site to the west, and this is the uh, roundabout which leads east into Southminster. Um, this is the existing and proposed block plan. Um, you can see there's an uh, existing single storey projection to the side here, which will be removed to facilitate the development. And this is the uh, neighbouring farmhouse to the south. Are the existing floor plans? And um, this is the part to be removed. And the existing elevation plans. The proposed floor and roof plans showing the dwelling and the internal garage here at ground floor level um, and then the upstairs bedrooms and the upstairs storage area above the garage at first floor level. Uh, the proposed elevation plans and this is the eastern elevation with the garage doors here and the main entrance into the dwelling here. And these are the plans from the approved prior approval application to convert the building into two dwellings split in half here. So two, three bedroom dwellings. And then just some photos um, showing the access to the site from Scotts Hill and um, some photographs of the building. Uh, some more photos of the site and the view towards the neighbour to the south and some more photos of the building. Consideration is given to the extant prior approval application and due to this the proposal is not considered to result in demonstrable harm to the character and appearance of the area or in relation to parking or amenity space. It's therefore recommended for approval subject to the legal agreement in relation to RAMS being agreed. Thank you chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Stablehurst. And uh, I'm now opening the debate uh, and inviting people to put any questions, make any comments. Uh, I see no hands up. Uh, who would like to go first? Uh, Councillor Beale. Yes. Uh, have you got the South Mr. Parish Council um, reply to this application, please? Uh, uh, Ms. Stablehurst? Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, um, it is a supporting um, comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I'm actually quite familiar with this site because I walk my dogs at the farm opposite and it's very close to the enormous new development of the uh, you know, generic houses, which I don't know if you quite pick up on on the uh, on the map. So even though it's slightly outside the development area, it's only by a few few hundred metres. And I think we have to be very mindful of the extant planning permission. And I really can't see any harm at all caused by this, to be quite honest. So I would support it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bell. Uh, count, uh, are there any other councillors who would care to comment on this particular application? I will therefore ask if officers have anything to add. 
and if they don't, I will then uh, propose that uh, we uh, that this committee uh, goes with the officer's recommendation and approves it subject to completion. I understand of an uh, S106 uh, section 106 agreement. Uh, I'll if, second that. Uh, thank you. That's been seconded. Uh, can we do this by assent or do we need to go to a vote? I'm going to ask for assent. Uh, can you please let me know if you assent? Agreed. 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 agreed, agreed. Sir. Okay, that is agreed. agreed. And uh, therefore, uh, we uh, move on to. Apologies, uh, Chairman. Oh, sorry, Councillor Sharon. Uh, you had your hand up, but. So you're now muted if you want to unmute yourself. That was the assent hand, Chairman. I was banging up a hand for um, <laughs> assent. Thank you very much. You said use our hands, you know, so uh, did, sorry. Did you I did right. a bit of nodding, but I put my hand up as well. Thank you. Cheers. Um, so. Uh, Apologies, uh, Chairman. Could I just, sorry, uh, through you, Chairman, could I just um, interject for a moment? Um, yeah. At the start of the uh, presentation for item five, uh, Ms. Parker Haynes read out an additional condition to be applied to item five. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, for, for clarity, that we had actually, um, that members had actually registered that. So that was also part of the approval of item five. Uh, my understanding uh, uh, is that it was. Okay, um, I thought, yes, I thought I heard you saying the additional condition. I just wanted to double check that before we moved on. That, that's okay. fine. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, item seven. This is 20 stroke 01275 stroke FUL commercial area Bradwell Marina, Waterside Road, Bradwell on Sea. This is on pages 49 to 58. Please note that a member's update in relation to this application has been circulated. I'm sure we will hear exactly what it is from Ms. Staplehurst, uh, who I will call on for in a moment. But just to remind you once more, please use the hands up function. Keep your points as clear and succinct as possible. Ms. Staplehurst. Thank you, Chairman. This application proposes the construction of a workshop building divided into three units to be used for the carrying out of work on large yachts, including painting, refitting and repairs at Bradwell Marina. Please see the members update with um, an, an amended condition and there is also a verbal update. The highway authority have responded and have no objections. This is the location plan showing the site adjacent to the marina um, accessed um, via Waterside Road along here. The block plan showing the positioning of the three units. The floor plan showing the layout of each unit, uh, which is primarily a large workshop area but with a small office toilet and kitchenette. The proposed elevations uh, with this elevation with the um, doors fronting northwards. Some photographs uh, showing the rough positioning of the building, uh, the view from Waterside Road to the east of the site, the view looking southwest towards the site from the entrance to the marina access and the view south along the access adjacent to the marina. So the building would be behind here. And then the views of directly where the building would be located. Overall, whilst the development would be a large addition to the site, its use would be in keeping with the marina use and provide employment opportunities and is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Ms. Stablehurst. Uh, and uh, I now throw this open for debate. Uh, does anybody, uh, well, would anybody like to open the debate with any comments on this particular application? Uh, Councillor Stamp. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think it's great that um, we are getting some boat um, associated um, services and trades coming back. Uh, all too quickly, we're losing it, and I certainly wholeheartedly support this uh, recommendation, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Channer. 
very much along similar lines, Chairman. Um, I'm I'm pleased to, you know, it's going to add benefit to our marine industry. I'm very much hoping some young people, we need uh, young people to learn <coughs> skills um, and everything, and certainly to have an area where yachts can be worked on in whatever way it will supply um, employment. Um, so, yes, I, I do, uh, like Councillor Stamp, have to support this wholeheartedly. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Channer. Is there anybody else who would like to talk on this? Uh, I see nobody, so I'm therefore going to propose. Uh, I still, no, sorry, Councillor Helm, were you? No, no, I see no one. So uh, I'm therefore going to propose uh, that we go with the officer's recommendation and improve this subject to the conditions uh, that they have uh, outlined in their report. Uh, do I have a seconder? I'll second I'll that. Second that. Uh, I think Councillor Stamp uh, and Councillor Helm seconded it, but uh, let's, let's take uh, Councillor Stamp as I think she was a fraction of a second ahead. Uh, and if we uh, could now uh, agree with this by assent, use your hands, use whatever you like, uh, um, if you would like to assent to this. Agreed. 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 Both hands. OK, great. That's fantastic. So uh, that uh, is now time to move on to item eight, uh, 21 stroke VAR, Thedham's Farm, uh, Steeple Road, Southminster, Essex. We uh, This is pages 59 to 68. The officer will speak in a moment. I'll remind you of the process to put up your hands, be succinct. Uh, I now ask that we uh, just bear with me for a second. I don't th do we have somebody? Yes. First of all, we'll go to uh, Catherine Matthews and then we have somebody, a public participant who will be taking part. I understand. So uh, Catherine Matthews, please, could you present the report? I can't I can't hear anything, Chairman. I can't hear anything, uh, Catherine, I'm afraid. OK, thank you, Chairman. Um, good evening, members. I can hear you now. Good, thank you. And I can't hear you. Uh, you seem to, the, your mic seems to be coming in and out. Is there a connection issue? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. OK, <clears throat> thank you. All right, so this is an, this is, uh, uh, an application um, to vary condition 19 of the outline plan permission um, for this site and that condition related to requirements um, for highway works. So this is the um, application site. And again, location plan. This shows the approved layout for the housing. So the plan permission was for 94, 94 homes and associated works. Um, <clears throat> and the um, plan on on the left there shows the I say the approved layout and the, the link road ar around the edge of the site, and then we've got an aerial view um, which it was dated about October 2020. So things have moved on since then, but that was the most up to date aerial photo. But that shows the the link road um, around the edge of the site, and these are some photos showing what what is there now so the one on the left is looking north so that's the area of the site that um there with the link road section of the link road that is currently uh, not open yet and then looking southwards it shows the the new housing on the left there and the section of the link road which um is currently open to um traffic So the, app application, the applicant seeks a variation of condition 19 um, to delay the opening of that last section of the link road. The current, that current application requires the whole link road to be open before first occupation, um, but that um, time has passed. <coughs> They're now asking if the, a delay could be um, allowed so that they could um, open the link road after the completion or within three months of the completion of the 80th dwelling. Um, and it is considered that the proposed delay in the opening link road would not result in any undue harm in terms of highway safety or accessibility. Um, Essex County Council highways have also um, raised no objections. The principal reason for requesting the delay is to avoid potential conflict between the construction 
between construction and non-construction use of the highway and as can be seen from the photo that section of the link road <clears throat> on either side of that is being used as the uh, part of the construction compound for the for the development um, so it is recommended that plan permission is granted subject to conditions um, <clears throat> set out in your papers um, but there these are the conditions that were also attached to the outline plan permission but have been revised and updated to reflect the details which have been approved since the outline plan sorry sorry the outline plan permission was granted um the the, the deed of variation well, the deed of variation was also be required to amend the wording of the um, unilateral undertaking which was uh, completed um, as part of the outline plan permission and therefore that um, is reflected in the um, recommendation on the agenda papers. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Catherine Matthews. Uh, just to say, um, we had quite a lot of wind noise on your presentation. It may be that you need something like uh, a smaller version of this sort of uh, muffler or windsock on your microphone. That may help, I don't know. It just, uh, it sounded like uh, air coming from your mouth was making it a bit tricky to hear. But I think we heard it all, which is the most important thing. Uh, and we now have one public, uh, we have a public participant for this planning application. Uh, so I now invite the applicant, Mr. Chris Weber, uh, to read out his submission. I need to remind you that you are allocated two minutes only for public speaking in accordance with the scheme. So please turn your camera on and your microphone on now. And when you've finished, turn them both off if you would, uh, please. C uh, can you go ahead, please, Mr. Weber? Will do. Um, good evening, councillors, and thank you, Chairman Skeens, for the opportunity to speak today in support of our application to very condition 19, which is the highway works at our development site Blackwater Reach in Southminster. My name is Chris Weber, and I'm the planner for David Wilson Homes. As your officers have set out, David Wilson Homes have asked for a variation to condition 19, so we can amend the opening of the link road connecting the B1018 Scotts Hill roundabout to Steeple Road through our site. This is because of significant concerns over the health and safety of both on-site workers and members of the public if the link road was opened as currently stipulated under the condition. An opening of the link road on these timescales uh, would result in construction plant mixing with pedestrian foot and vehicular traffic over and above those which is just as opposed to the normal site residents, thereby creating a significant conflict to road safety and an unacceptable uh, potential risk to health. Because of this, the proposal is fully endorsed by Essex Highways, and I note Southminster Parish Council have no objection. The condition as currently worded stipulates that the link road must be opened prior to the first occupation. Our proposed revision to three months from the 80th occupation would take us to August of this year and would allow sufficient time for David Wilson Homes to simultaneously open up the link road for public traffic and progress the development sufficiently so that heavy plant will no longer have to utilise the link road, thereby removing the potential for any conflict and thus threat to health. As your officers also confirm, the proposed deferment would not delay the delivery of our homes or prevent access being gained to any of the new dwellings by means of vehicle or on foot. And I'd like to make it clear that no variation to the actual works are proposed and David Wars Homes are committed to delivering all the improvements as set by the planning permission. Uh, to conclude, this proposal has no planning objections from statutory consultees and we have worked proactively with Essex Highways uh, and Catherine to ensure the link road is opened up at the earliest but safest opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Weber. Uh, I now open the debate and invite people to comment upon uh, this application. Or does anybody uh, care to open the discussions? Uh, yes, Councillor Bell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, uh, it sounds eminently sensible to me, really. And uh, yeah, we wouldn't want construction traffic mixing with pedestrian and uh, residential traffic. So uh, I think it, it sounds like a sensible way forward to me. Thank you. Yes, I mean, I, I'm thinking that, that because of COVID delays, that we have, I mean, of course, if in the original application and the stipulation was that it should be open the road should open when uh, we asked it to be opened uh, th there was the anticipation that that mix wouldn't happen but circumstances have changed uh, could uh, uh, an officer just explain why that change has happened again i know that it's in the report but uh, why it is that we've come to this uh, that we're having to make this decision to Uh, 
Catherine Matthews. Uh, sorry, Catherine, I can't hear you again. You'll need to move your microphone towards you. Yeah. Moving down. I don't normally use the headphones, but um, it wasn't working without them today. Um, yeah, so the, the, the applicant's uh, principal reason is, as we explained, is um, the area that is currently um, closed <coughs> off is used as their construction compound and they um, don't want the, the they want the the risk of them um, having construction traffic and um, non-construction traffic mixing mixing together um the sure the, the, isn't that always going to be the case i mean what changed here um the um the uh, the the covid um crisis pandemic has has all, has affected the construction industry quite generally and um that um that uh, that may well have been a factor in um, why the things hadn't gone as as has been uh, as was originally planned. Um, obviously, the the outline plan permission was granted a number of years ago now, and um, <clears throat> so the practicalities of of constructing the the estate um, in 2020 2021 are obviously quite different to what was envisaged back in the. Um, when the outline permission was originally granted, so um, so th this proposal takes into account the um, current situation, and um, comes to a, a compromise between um, opening up the link road um, too too early from a practical point of view, and but ensuring that the link road is is provided and finished and completed and opened um, before um, the the housing estate is uh, is completed. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Catherine. Yes, I just wanted to be clear on why the situation has changed. Uh, I'm now going sorry, to. Sorry, Councillor Skeen, I just, just wanted to. Sorry, just who, add... who's speaking? Sorry, this is Michael Johnson. Oh, uh, Michael, sorry. Yeah, yeah Hi, no, I just wanted to add that, um, you know, these sorts of variations with conditions which are tied into timing the. <laughs> The opening of, you know, infrastructure or the use of infrastructure and uh, bringing forward of the development is quite common over this pandemic period because of the delays to construction, um, the need for obviously the developer to start to, you know, bring housing forward um, to generate funds, obviously, and then the conflict, obviously, there would be with delay and the construction work. So this is this is quite a normal process for this to happen. Uh, there is no implications in terms of, you know, the impact on the delivery of the scheme otherwise or the link road. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. I'm therefore going to make the proposal uh, that we go with the officer's recommendation uh, and I ask for a seconder. Uh, will somebody second that, please? I'll second that, Chair. Councillor Stamp yeah. has seconded that. Uh, can we do this? Uh, I see uh, there have been no objections so far, so I think we can do this by assent. Could you please sound, uh, make a noise wave your hand? Yeah, okay. great. Agreed. agreed. Thank you. That's therefore been agreed by assent. We now, uh, is that uh, the case, Bernard? You're happy with that, I take it? Yes, Chairman, that's absolutely fine. Thank you. So item nine, any other items of business the Chair may decide are urgent? I have none. So I therefore close the meeting uh, at uh, 18.53, uh, thanking everybody for uh, your contributions. Uh, please don't uh, go into any further discussions. Please leave the meeting promptly. And thank you all very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, you very much, Chairman. Good night, everybody.